And alas, welcome everyone. We have Man in Cave re-upload. This is how you know it's going to be good. Internet Historian doesn't always put out videos. When they do, they're awesome. And unfortunately, the original did go down. And I uh, want to do what I can to help the algorithm a little bit in what ways I can as well. If you haven't seen, I would definitely recommend after this, go ahead and checking out the original. They put out great work. Last, let's get into re-upload, see if anything has changed. I hardly remember. This was early, Kip. So it's going to be a fun one. Sorry for the re-upload, fellas. The original got copy struck. Rip. Rip. But don't worry, we are working on new main channel videos. Here's a sample of the timelines. In the meanwhile, incognito. Long videos. Nido mode, which has a new video about every six weeks. And story mode, which has a new video about every four weeks. Thank you for watching a second time. I completely forgot. <laughs> Pause, champ. Completely forgot story mode exists. I saw that Resident Evil 5. I'll have to go through that. That is fantastic, Internet Historian. You absolute legend. And the fact that you went just powered through this copyright, you took it down, and you're back just as strong. I saw that comment section. That's a 10. That, that's a 10. <laughs> what? In the state of Kentucky, there is a cave that every now and then demands a sacrifice. Spooky. January 30th, 1925. Fuck, we are full on three years in the Great Depression, aren't we? Wow. Wow, 100, 100, years, 100 years does things. A man walks towards the cave with a kerosene lamp in his hand. Mm -hmm. He hangs up his jacket and ducks into a five-foot opening. The inside of the cave is small. He has to go on hands and knees, mm -hmm. crawling through passages of sharp stone and choking dust. Mm -hmm. Then down a chute he had cleared out months earlier. All of the daylight is gone from here, and this lantern is his only source of light. Ignoring the loose limestone rocks perched directly above him, he is now 100 feet in. I don't even know. I'd have to speak to someone with the geology credentials or ge geologist in general. I know limestone is pretty malleable. I know that at the very least. I don't know if you can necessarily mine this efficiently. So, so like, obviously going down through shoot, obviously going down through tunnels, right? Well, why just make them bigger? If limestone is super malleable it could destabilize the actual structure of the cave, if I understand that correctly. So that not, isn't necessarily the best idea. And here he reaches the turnaround room. Now they call this the turnaround room because this is the juncture where even experienced cavers say, no thanks, <laughs> and turn around. Uh huh. Because to continue on means going through this, no. the squeeze. A gap in the stone of only nine inches. For reference, he has a subway sub. Oh, five dollar foot long. Going through, he would look exactly like this. His arms will need to be completely at their side and he will need to exhale so that he can reduce the size of his torso. Gradually, bit by bit, he disappears into the hole. This man is just built differently. Not even like, not even like Badger built differently. Built st this man is, he's just built differently. I couldn't do that. <laughs> His clothes are caught on sharp gypsum crystals, Ugh. hooking into him and threatening to hold him in place. Using just his feet, he pushes himself forward. Mm -hmm. He reaches a wider opening at the other side then crawls forward towards a ledge. Mm -hmm. Lit by the lamp is a drop about twice his height. Mm -hmm. There's already a rope here. He gently climbs down. His worn out leather shoes touch the ground. Like, Urban Exploring is an entirely different beast. I, I, as someone that would like to do it in a not trespassing fashion, I would Urban Explore. I'd have to make sure I'm not trespassing, right? Like going to place that'd be fine to do, obviously. Uh, caves are a no-no for me, because underground lakes and shit exist. Like, you can just, like, fall down a chute, and you're in a literal underground lake. Or you, uh, 
you, you finagle your way through this kind of squeeze, and you can't get back out. And you just kind of sit there. <laughs> I get spelunking is totally 100% a hobby and a thing and a thing people enjoy. It is a little too, uh, little too, uh, what's, what's the word? Not, not heavy. It, it's a little too daring for my blood. <laughs> this is as far as he can go. And it is time for work to begin. Right. What he is working on is another opening. Mm -hmm. At the moment, it's too small for anyone to fit through. Mm -hmm. But he will chip away at it until he can shove himself right through the other side. Because on the other side is this. An mm -hmm. otherworldly cave structure, dripping with pristine white crystals. Hmm. Every day for months, he has been removing rocks from this crevice. To him, this is all just routine. Yeah. So he shimmies further into the gap. It's just his thing. His body contorting to the shape of the crevice as Whoa. he wriggles his way in. The walls becoming so tight that he can no longer use his arms. No. Then, about halfway, he stops. Hmm. The lantern. It's starting to dim. He will need to go all the way back to the surface to refuel the thing. Mm-hmm. He sighs. He slowly shuffles back out, pushing the lantern with his shoulder. Then, oh no. His foot. Ding, crack, darkness. Uh, yeah. He has knocked over the lamp, and it has broken. That's not shatterproof glass, too, from my understanding. That's, like, actual, like, you drop that. Like, I went to Astoria, Oregon once, and we ended up going on the one of the older or bus kind of things that they take tourists around front with. And the windows, you're not supposed to lean against them because it's old glass. Like, it doesn't it doesn't just shatter. It, like, shatters and falls in sh Like, cracks, shatters, and falls in sheets. That will guillotine you. <laughs> like, no, no, nothing against Astoria, you know, transit. I'm exciting that old glass functions differently than, like, shatterproof glass and, like, newer glass. It's... it's <sighs> that's gonna be sharp. The man breathed deeply and relaxed. Yeah. He had been in worse situations before, and he was confident he could navigate his way to the surface through feel alone. He searches around with his feet to find something he can push against. Uh. Ah, there's something, he thinks. But what he doesn't know is that he's pressing against a loose rock on the ceiling. There's no as soon as he puts his weight against it, it There's no way to know, though. They're like, there's especially in the dark down there with limited movement. I mean, hindsight is, for all intents and purposes, twenty twenty. There's no way to know. Have you ever, like, like ever, like, hopped, like, as a kid, right? Or even as an adult, really. Like, you go down to, like, a lake or something like that, a riverbed, and you're hopping on, you know, a bunch of rocks, like, big, bigger rocks, stuff like that, so you can hop between, right? Um, and you hit that one rock when you jump to it, and you're like, damn, I shouldn't have done that, and you fall. <laughs> and you're like, damn, shouldn't have done that. Like... It hindsight is twenty twenty hundred percent. There's no way for him to have known. Comes free. Ooh, ow. A solid piece weighing fifteen kilograms lands directly on his ankle. Thirty-three pounds. It aches, but he's okay. It doesn't feel as though his ankle is broken, just badly bruised and caught underneath the rock. Right. So he shuffles to move the rock away. Suddenly, gravel. A lot of gravel. It falls onto his feet, his legs, his torso, and the weight of it all forced the rock harder down onto his foot yep. and locks it in place. Every time he tries to move, more rubble falls, holding him tighter. He is stuck. Yep. This is Sand Cave. This man is Floyd Collins. He is trapped in absolute darkness. 60 feet deep below the earth, all of his limbs held in place at the very bottom of this. Wow. Like... I can't. I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't fucking. Do, someone. Someone could do it. He did it. 
I, I couldn't do it. Nope. <laughs> the deep woods and the deep earth. I'm Gucci, homie. But before I tell you what happens next, add time. Add time. Speaking of people trapped in a cave, World of Tanks. Tonk. World of Tanks is not only the best game I have ever played, it is the only game I have ever played. It's like cars, <laughs> but tanks. Picture this, you're a hot new T-3485M, and you've just joined the battle because some Cromwell B tank bagged your <laughs> entire family. It's time. <laughs> Man, that teabagging got me good. I am for revenge. You must use strategy. You must use stealth. You must use your wits to defeat your enemies. Use long range or short range. It's available on console, but I want you to get it on PC. Is there a tank bayonet? Comment section, please clarify. <laughs> Imagine a world war, but there are tanks involved this time. Yeah, now you're getting it. When you've seen as many messed up tanks as I have, you get a little cynical about the world. My God, I'm gonna be sick. Look at all the different tanks. You can collectomize and customize them all. Massive battles where you can constantly team kill and ruin other people's good time. What the f I'm on your f yeah! Did I mention it's historically accurate? Especially the Japanese robot tanks. Ooh, look. The tanks are kissing. <laughs> Progressive. <laughs> Use the invite code TANKMANIA and get Love the it. Excelsior 250k credits. Other stuff. Go to the link in the description and use the invite code TANKMANIA. Here's what you do. Give World of Tanks. Put that on one screen. Then, on a second monitor, you'll watch the next hour of this video while you play the game. Easy. Perfection. I'm contractually obliged to say thank you for being a friend. Sarge, no! Tanks empty, kid. Go on without me. No, use your repair consumable. <laughs> it's too late, kid. Tank care of my family for me. No. Get it, 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 get it. Add or... Collins is still in the dark, unable to move. He can feel the sharp crystals on the ground poking into his back. The ice melts above him, traces across the ceiling and drips directly onto his face. That'd be annoying. He would shield himself against the dripping, except that his right arm is wedged against the roof of the cave and his left is stuck in place underneath his torso. The cold water dripping onto him pools underneath Ugh. him. His, bo took his body temperature is going to drop from that, like straight, straight, straight up. Like... I mean, his body temperature for the initial bit will warm up the water around him, but since the water is a consistent drip at, at a certain point, there's the uh, the the thermal... I'm trying to figure out what... There, there was a scientific name for it. I can't remember. It's been way too long since I've actually been in school. Um, but there is a point where his heat will effectively run out, and the water, as it still is coming down, is still that consistent 12 degrees Celsius. So it will, therefore, as it keeps going back to 12 degrees celsius while withdrawing heat from him it'll eventually make him go down in, in uh uh temperature as well uh there, there i don't think thermal exchange though there is an actual word for that concept i just can't remember it offhand that is especially because in the dark like he can't see like it's pitch black so he's gonna feel every single drop every uh, when you sensory deprivation right when one of your senses or uh, a couple of your senses go down your other senses that aren't impaired will become amplified he is feeling a lot more of that slow steady breaths in the concentrated dark when he did attempt to shuffle more gravel and rocks would tumble from above and pile onto his feet so nothing would work mm -hmm. he raked his fingers against the wall until blood pooled underneath his nails ow and he realized that there was only one option left call out for help but wait, 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 wait. Who is Floyd, and why did he even go into a dangerous cave? Floyd started his caving career at the tender age of six. Jeez. Growing up, exploring the caves of Kentucky was practically all he did. He would go off on his own, disappearing into the caves for many hours at a time. Have you seen that movie, The Descent? It was a lot like that. <laughs> he grew up and he became embroiled in the Kentucky Cave Wars. Now, there's way too much to go into here, but the summary version is there's this huge network of mm -hmm. interconnected caves called Mammoth Caves. It's actually the largest cave system in the world, and there's a city right in... Really, the fact that it beats out France, I think Paris specifically, with not, not just the catacombs, but you know tunnels that extend beyond that, that's nutty. In the middle of it, Cave City, real name. 
So, of course, there are dozens of cave entrances on private property all over the place. Mm -hmm. Now, farmland in this region has very poor soil, and things do not grow well here. Mm -hmm. So, cave tourism as a source of income quickly became the prominent thing. Makes sense. However, a problem. There are a very large number of caves, but there are only a limited number of tourists. So, competition rapidly escalated. Visit mm -hmm. my cave. No, no, no. Visit my cave. Big signs were erected saying, ah, tourists, come to me. Ah, mine is definitely open. Mine is the best. But then competitors would respond by saying, hey, by the way, we're open, but don't go to that one over there. <laughs> it's really shitty. In fact, it's dangerous. <laughs> this kept going further. By the end, they were blocking off the trail to each other's property, beating each yeah. other in the streets, and hiring people called cappers who would dress up <laughs> as policemen and tell tourists, no, 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 you can't go in there. That one, no, it's illegal. I'm pretty sure that's a felony. Right, like impersonating a police officer is a felony, right? At least in the US. But this is also 1925. It, well, technically before 1925, right? Because 1925 is when Floyd got trapped in the in Sand Cave. So this is I mean we're talking Gadsby era. So we're talking maybe night what? This is pre-1920. Had that, I, I'd have to check if that had been written law, into law at that point, if impersonating a police officer was in fact a felony, or at the very least illegal. Like, that's very fascinating as a, like, time capsule thought experiment. Legal. Despite the fierce competition, Floyd found a cave on his property, and he started advertising it to tourists. Of course, very few came. Right. All right, he thought. What if I found something really special and unique? Then surely people would have to come to my cave to see it. So he kept exploring and exploring until he found this hollow. It was filled with big gypsum crystals. Mm -hmm. And when you were in there, it felt like a completely alien world. But it was barely accessible. This small tunnel is the only way in. Yeah. He would need to dig for months to open it up to tourists. But he knew he could do it. Back to the competition. They knew the value of this cave. They knew the potential. They wanted it for themselves. And they wanted Collins gone. A few months prior, a group of five men showed up to his farm unannounced. Ah, hand over that lease, Floyd. They said. You know, I was about to say that, man, 1920s sure were different. This wouldn't happen nowadays. And I literally remembered, citably, this is not slander, that Wizards of the Coast, actually, or even Hasbro, wh whichever way you want to look at it, sent the Pinkertons to a person's, to a creator's house to get back Magic the Gathering cards. That is a whole rabbit hole. That is not what I'm going into today. I just was like, man, this was sure different back in the day. I'm like, wait a minute. 2023 really isn't that different when we just have Wizards of the Coast doing effectively this. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Floyd, of course, refused. So they turned to violence, yep, yep, yep. knocking him down and savaging the helpless man until Homer, Floyd's brother, came running out of the house with a shotgun. Boomstick. But Floyd was not deterred. He spent 12 hours a day, every day, for months, clearing gravel and stone, chipping away at that passage. He would open it up to tourists, make his cave an incredible attraction, right. and make his dreams come true. So there's Floyd in the dark, yelling out for help, yelling into the pitch black. After a while, his voice would give out, and he would have to sleep to recuperate. He would then wake some time later, remember where he is, and begin yelling again for help. Here he remained in the dark for the next 23 hours. Rough. Wow. Quickly, you might wonder... How come no one's come for him after 23 hours? I mean, I'm sure he's going to explain it. Like, think of where he is, though, right? Like, if you, even if you, say, for example, you told your significant, if, if your thing is hunting, for example, right? And you told your significant other, others, whatever, however, whatever, right? That you're, hey, I'm going to go hunting, right? Oh, it's just, you know, cool, normal thing you do, or, you know, normal thing you do. Or if you just go, right? No, this is not outside the norm of Floyd to be gone, to do to doing this kind of thing right or at the very least just like kind of doing his own thing and especially when as far as we're aware right no one really goes to this part of the cave 
as mentioned by the effectively the no pull in the beginning, the nine inch uh, squeeze, right? And even then, like sound is going to disperse after a period of after a set length, you know, m- m- distance, right? So if I yell, you know, uh, rock, rock and stone, right? <laughs> if I yell rock and stone at a certain point, someone's not going to be able to hear it, even if I'm in open field. Much less a cave where the sound is going to bounce around each other, and it also dissipate at some point. So, even if he's screaming at the top of his lungs, it's highly possible that no one's just in that area to see it. But that, that being said, this is really the only thing that he can do. So, I mean, the, it, there is a number of factors, at least from my prediction. Well... Sand Cave resides on a 200-acre farm. Oh, boy! There are several homes on this property with other families. One of them, of course, is Colin's house, where Floyd's father, Lee, resides. Now, Lee and Floyd constantly get into fights about how to run things. Lee wants his son to concentrate on farming, and Floyd wants to concentrate on cave tourism. Yeah. Arguments would often get heated. And Lee was also (laughs) a bit of a drunk. It was doubtful that he would even notice if his son Floyd yeah. was missing. Also, Al- alcoholism is not a joke. This is why. So not helping things. Floyd regularly lodged at two other homes on the farm. Mm-hmm. So when he didn't return to one host, uh. they would presume that he was staying with the other. Okay. And even worse still, he was known to occasionally sleep in the cave. Yeah. Doing stints of up to thirty hours in there without resurfacing. Regardless, around the 23-hour mark, a few locals started to suspect that, hey, something might be wrong, and they went to check up on him. And here, they spotted his jacket Mm -hmm. still hung up. Unusual. Right. They went deeper. However, there was only one person small enough to make it as far as the turnaround room. This was a 17-year-old Jewel Estes. Local team. He refused to go into the squeeze, but... No. If he yelled, Floyd would probably hear him. Floyd! And Collins yelled back. Yes, I'm <laughs> here. Fair, yeah. Istis emerges from the cave. Oh, okay, we know he's trapped, and we know where he is. So, a whole troop of locals show up. Right. Out of my way. Say a bunch of men who would confidently charge into the cave. But, once they reach the final squeeze... Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Uh-uh. They would charge straight back out again, saying things like, There's no way any man could fit in there. Out of my way, they would say as they... So, I love stack. I love when people make statements like that. Because clearly people have made it there. <laughs> We're hitting in the reverse direction. Mm-hmm. So a few more hours passed. Word would spread around Cave City and the neighboring areas. Slowly, a crowd formed outside Sand Cave. Over in Louisville, Floyd's 22-year-old brother, Homer, he gets a phone call. Ah, uh, hello? I see. Ah, my brother. He's trapped in a cave? I'm on my way. Homer jumps on a coach and makes his way to Floyd's cave. Could you imagine doing that nowadays? Just being like, yeah, hey boss, my brother's trapped in a cave, I gotta go. Like how they would take that in modern and modernity, right? And would probably be like, nah, you're you're staying at work. Yes, your brother's trapped in a cave, but nah, we need you here because we're short staffed. Like, I think that's the part that upsets me. <laughs> Homer struts up to the scene. He walks past the growing crowd of unhelpful onlookers and makes a beeline for the cave to save his brother. Mm -hmm. In he goes, down the chute, through the narrowing passages, down on his hands and knees towards the turnaround room. And when he arrives, he does not hesitate. (gasps) He squeezes into the hole, scrambles his way through to the ledge on the other side. He Mm -hmm. sees Floyd below and slides down to meet him. Floyd! Sup? (laughs) Sup? Probably wasn't that casual. Oh, thank God you're here. Homer took a moment to shine his light around. So it might not be, it wouldn't, might not have been that casual. It's entirely possible, because we obviously don't know that, I mean, we might know, we might know from some blog or some interview somewhere what they did say. You know, I, I definitely have known people that would get into the situation. Obviously, they're coming down on, you know, adrenaline, you know, I need to get to this person. And they just look, they'll look at each other, and then the person coming will be like, 
sup dingus and the other person would be like fuck you too <laughs> that's the kind of company i keep and i love it around the area and assess the situation it was not good no this rock formation is going to prove almost impossible to work around right all right so let's have a look floyd is here the rock is here pinning his ankle He's surrounded by rubble, and there's a pocket of gravel above him right. ready to fall. Mm -hmm. However, because this opening is so small, there are only two viable ways of reaching Floyd and that gravel. Rope. Option one, the most obvious, feet first. Yeah. But if but... you do this, you have to kind of squat, and your own torso obstructs access to the rubble. Right. Otherwise, option two... It's not the feet first approach is not ergonomic considering the confines of the uh, the vertical space. Come down head first. That will give you better access. But, but you you're can't. trying to move hundreds of pounds of gravel. No. Upside down. No, and also the blood to your, blood would rush to your head. Like you ever just like you know, hang off the couch upside down and eventually you get dizzy. Maybe pass out if it's long enough. Right. That is the same principle. Like the blood rushes to your head and you know you can just kind of kind of not after a while um but also um pulling because in the other one you could kind of push it right so it wasn't as ergonomic but you could push pushing is inherently stronger than pulling at least when it comes to human anatomy so when you start pulling like this while well, you have a, you're effectively using a hammer with the feet first approach well this one the answer is approach you're using a scalpel if that makes sense like this one has less power inherently behind it like for example like take any take anything right I, I don't know that you might have around like a amazon box or whatever right and then walk up to it and like push it okay and then pull it notice that there's a degree of force difference in trying to push versus pull it pushing is inherently the easier option when it comes to human anatomy worse yet there's barely an inch around collins on either side so good luck getting your arm down near floyd's ankle to actually free him no. from the wedged rock no homo whips around and yells Quickly, some food and drink. They send it through. But first, Homer gives Floyd a liter of coffee to liter. warm him up. Wow. Then, as many sausage sandwiches as he can stomach. He yeah. manages to down nine of them. The legend! Dietary advice has changed since the 1920s. What's what's the, 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 <laughs> the Atlantis <laughs> food groups? Beans, bacon, whiskey, and lard? Man, life advice to live by. <laughs> Feeling better? Much better. Then Homer went to task. He began removing rocks and gravel, tiny scoop at a time, right. with the help of an old syrup can. Mm, bucket. That legend. Bucket. For the next eight hours he toiled, first with hands, then once enough was cleared, using a crowbar to scoop behind his brother, mm -hmm. scraping away sharp protrusions as he went. Yeah. It was slow progress, virtually futile. While holding up his body weight with one arm, he would have to use the other to scoop away gravel. Then watch as new gravel yes. would suddenly fall from above and undo all the work. Homer stayed for as long as he could, but after several hours, he was ragged. His teeth chattered uncontrollably. He's his cold. lungs choked with dust. Yeah. And the skin on his fingers shredded from the rubble. Yeah. However, something new. By the time Homer reached outside, he was surprised to see a mob of approximately a hundred men and women standing around, drinking, squabbling, and talking big game about how they too were going to save Floyd. This is just so. This is society in a nutshell. This is just people being social in a nutshell. Something is happening. People want to be vicariously part of it, or at least try to be part of it. And I just, this is so human. It, it hurts. I can't hike out. This is so human that it actually just, like, hurts because it's like... Ugh, the, if you're going to talk a big game, then go fucking down there and fucking help him. Don't sit up here drinking fucking whiskey and, and beer and just being, oh, I could solo this entire cave. Then fucking do it! Stop fucking... Stop fucking around or take a fucking page out of uh, Badger's book. Stop being a gaggle fuck, right? Stop just standing around doing nothing. Actually do the damn thing. If you are on the premises and you're not doing anything, you're actively being a hindrance in this in this situation. The press was also present to help people gawk from afar. Homer shunned them all and rested up in a small tent in front of the cave. Hull. 
Strangers immediately crowded around him to ask innocent, but frankly, frustrating questions yeah. and offer unsolicited, obvious advice, as well as wildly impractical solutions. Yeah. Listen, listen, you just have to untie his shoes. Free the foot, free the man, right, fellas? No, 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 no. Fuck Let's off. hire a contortionist. We get a hammer and a chisel. We'll have him back by supper. Ah, we, we should jerk him off. Right, guys? All right, <laughs> I made that third guy up. But you get the idea. There, there would be that third guy somewhere in the crowd, let's be real, though. A lot of these guys are drunk, by the way. So the discussions very quickly went from zero to 100. Yeah. Hey, new idea. How about dynamite? We'll simply blow him out. One group formed, insisting it was a great idea. But it's not a great idea. Are you planning to blow him up as well? And dynamite is weaker than C4, at least from my understanding of how the explosion actually works. Like... Even still, it's an explosion going, and you you have no idea about, at this point, you have no idea about the stability of the rock, right? If it's something like granite, okay, maybe it's got a little structure to it, maybe a little more stability to it, right? But if it's something like limestone, right? I mean, do you even know what that's going to do? I mean, he, he very well could. He very well couldn't. I mean, what, what what is your credentials to talk on the subject of using dynamite to b do a controlled blast that close to somebody in a confined space that's already being crushed by the cave itself right that is whew. and another saying no 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 the explosion will kill him and the weight of the new rocks will surely crush him they shouted at each other for a while until someone suggested hey how about gas torches we can <laughs> use acetylene torches to cut through the rock and make the hole bigger no 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 that'll cook him or the gas yeah. will fill the cave and kill everyone inside uh -huh. they fought over that too but by far the most common suggestion was to simply cut off the foot <laughs> never mind that the foot itself was unreachable and never mind that he'd lose so much blood he might not make it back to the surface I mean, just hemorrhaging. Yeah, you only have what five, approximately five liters of blood. At a, you only have so much blood you can lose. And never minding even more that Floyd was strongly reluctant to the idea. Yeah. Whatever, Whatever you do, don't, don't cut, cut my, my foot off. <laughs> Homer could have easily ignored all of this pointless bickering, except that not one of them would just brave the damn cave yeah. and continue shoveling away the gravel. Uh huh. The formula was always the same. Bold, fearless men would strut into the cave with sandwiches and blankets, then reach the turnaround room and immediately lose their nerve, ah! and dump it all outside of the hole, and then return back outside and go, oh, absolutely, no, he says, thanks for the food, thank you so much. Yum, yum. No one would go through that squeeze. Wow. Dozens more men would try. All of them would fail. I feel like this is the quickest way to just defuse somebody who's trying to be this kind of person, right? To be this personality. Like, oh man, I'm so good at Rainbow Six Siege, man. I can go, you know, I can go 15-0 uh, easily and, you know, win all these games. Okay, then do it. What? And you, you queue in or you watch them play and they, they get ganked super hard. Oh man, this game was a fluke, fucking hacker. Call of Duty League, you know, you, you know the personality type, right? And it's not just related to gamers, right? Someone could be like, "Yeah, I can go hit a, uh, hit this target from 500 yards." Okay, do it, and then they fucking like, <laughs> then you realize their scope isn't even zeroed in. It's just like I, so can we not <laughs> just chat? If someone's going to say something within reason, just challenge. Like, okay, fine, do it. Show me. At the very least, then you can prove that you've done it. <laughs> it just takes care of this problem real quick. February 2nd, 9 a.m. Three days. So far, Homer has been the only person who has been face-to-face -face with Floyd. And that would continue to be true until... Here we are at the Louisville Courier. There's uh -huh. a spirited young news hawk named William Miller. He's talking to his boss, and he's trying to convince him that it's a great idea for him to cover the story of the man trapped in the cave. Listen up, boss. I'm hearing talk of a man in a cave. Ah! Stuck down there, and I want to get down there, too. Get to the nitty-gritty, you hear? This is an opportunity for some good PR, Miller. I'm in. But I want us to sponsor that rescue. Picture this. Man saved from cave by Louisville Courier, the finest newspaper in the state. Mm -hmm. Ah, that'll drum up plenty of interest. 24 yeah. carat idea, boss. I'll make it happen. I'll get down there too sweet. So off he goes to Floyd's cave. What did he just say? What? Too sweet. Back what? over at the cave, Homer is sitting outside trying to recuperate. Uh -huh. As Miller wanders up, Homer is not interested in giving an interview. He wants someone to help. 
So as Miller asks questions, eh. Homer tries his best to show contempt. Yeah. Sure. Frustrated, Homer bluntly says, Listen, you want more information? The hole's right behind me. Why don't you go take a look yourself? Miller thinks for a moment, then says, Yeah, all right. He grabs a lantern and crouches down to enter the cave. The absolute fucking legend. Like, someone's like, fucking do it. I, the, the, the reverse of that argument, right? If someone is like, you know, if you're, if you know you can do a thing and someone's trying to be annoying, like, oh, well, you know, you can't, you can't go down there. You don't got the guts to do it, right? And you, and you know, you can, you, you can, one, ignore them, two, if you're actually annoyed enough, fine, I'll fucking do it. Let's go. Hm. As he walked, cold water filled his shoes. He was stepping in newly formed puddles. That water Wait. is coming from the inside of the cave as the temperature slowly increases yep. and the frost inside melts. Oh no. The stable environment of the cave is starting to change. That is thanks in no That's an issue. <laughs> That's an issue. A small part to the growing crowd of gawkers. To stay warm, they were building fires and hanging around the entrance of the cave Fuck to off. shelter from the elements. But nonetheless, Miller presses on and all that's left is that final squeeze, and he's there. He stops. He takes a moment and decides to call out to Floyd. Floyd! Hearing there is someone on the other side, he feels ashamed not to try. Into yeah. the dark he went, through the nine-inch squeeze. The crystal gypsum cuts into his elbows and tugs at his clothes. He gets snagged. He's spluttering through the pools of muddy water. He stops, collects himself, and pushes on. He can barely inhale. So you got this you got this news reporter, right? Who effectively was just told, fucking just go do it. And he did. And then you look at all these people outside that are actually actively making the situation worse. Because they're disrupting that the environment of the cave, right? They're disrupting this and making the situation worse. And they're actively just like, oh, God, God could do it. Take Swig from the trusty Vault 13 canteen. Oh, I could do it. And you just look at him like, skill issue. Fucking do it. Or not, you know, it, it, oh, I, you know, it's, uh, I had a little too many of those, uh, those sausage sandwiches for breakfast. And it's like, fucking skill issue, mate. If he gets stuck in here, he can only hope that someone else can come in from behind and pull him out by the legs. But eventually, he makes it through. Fantastic. He is now on his belly, looking down at Floyd. Neat. He sat right next to Floyd, ready to interview him. But Floyd didn't really answer any of his questions. At the moment, he is sitting in a pool of water yes. that is 12 degrees, slowly sapping his body temperature. Uh, yep. He is dying from exposure. Uh -huh. The cold is diminishing Floyd's mental faculties, and he can barely make sentences. There's nothing Miller can do, so he hurriedly turns around. He worked his way back through the squeeze, past the turnaround room, and out into the daylight. The legend. Homer turns to Miller. Proof that he had made it all ah! the way to Floyd is soaked onto his mud-stained clothes. No longer frustrated with the young reporter, instead, he excitedly runs over to him. It's the fucking, the, the gif, where the, the dude's staring at you, and he just goes... He just nods at you. Like, like, you get it. At this point, he has proven that he is now worth his time. You and me. Together, we can get Floyd out of there. Now, there were two people who could help rescue Floyd. Now, helping with the rescue was not the only thing that Miller did for Floyd. Mm -hmm. Perhaps even more crucially, his reporting was responsible for turning Floyd into a nationwide story. Miller took interviews, relayed first-person accounts, and would spend many hours with Floyd himself in that cave. He gave an insight into the story that only a first-person account could, mm -hmm. and in turn, gave the public a figure who they would deeply relate to. Updates to the story would be printed in over a thousand local and national newspapers. Wow. You couldn't escape it. No. It was also the era when radio became a regular feature for regular Americans. Radio allowed... Night. This was 1925? Holy shit, radio's been around for a while. ...out something new. Hourly updates. Letting people get engrossed into the story. That's awesome. So, mostly thanks to Miller, the story of Floyd 
over the next week would grow and grow. And everybody wanted to know, will this man make it? Yeah. Back outside the cave, someone new entered the story. Robert Burton. He would become the third man to reach Floyd, a firefighter from Louisville. Thin framed, but muscular. He got scratched up pretty good and soaked by the pooling water. But he made it through with little fuss, and he confidently lowered himself down to Floyd's position. I like he's just like, fuck it, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> just imagine this man coming, right? He just walks through the crowd, walks into the cave, just goes down like it's just, 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 it's just another day. And I'm just this absolute fucking legend. It was not an optimistic sight. No. Floyd's condition was deteriorating. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got a heck of a problem here, but I think I can get you out with a rope. Floyd nods in approval. Go on. We might just pull your bloody leg off. Just pull my leg off then. Get me out of here. Burden returned to the surface and faced the crowd. He announced, We will attempt a rope pull. Uh <laughs> I, I don't laugh at this man. I laugh at the fact that this is 75-ish, right, hours in, and none of these fucking idiots out here have even bothered to be like, mate, let's just, do a ro let's just rope pull him. Like... You would think this is, like, basic, like, okay, he's clearly in an situation. Let us information gather. Let us assess. Let us go through the logical steps here. And that being said, obviously, if the rope doesn't fucking work, and maybe someone did pitch it, right? I mean, he's the only person that has fucking really bothered, I mean, aside from the other two that have actually reached him, right, to really do anything. Just, these, just gaggle fuck of people just sitting here, just drinking fucking whiskey, beer, whatever the fuck they are, literally doing nothing for the situation. Like, why are you here? Go home. <laughs> I get that you want to be part of the spectacle. Go home. I know small towns, being from a small town originally myself, I know there's nothing going on there. Go home. <laughs> If you're not actively trying to make the situation better, you are being a detriment. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea. You're just gonna tear his foot off. Yeah, hold on. What about the sharp rocks? Raking through all that and there'll barely be a body left to bring to the surface. A physician stepped forward with authority. The ligaments in the foot are strong, but if you pull on the torso without a harness, all you'll likely do is tear his internal organs. Okay. One, he's a physicist, right? Or not physicist, excuse me. Physician. <laughs> different fields <laughs> he's a physician credentials thank you for speaking reason man everyone else is just kind of you know what if okay what's your like yes this makes sense your fucking point like we we work around that as needed this has credentials and science behind it thank you mr physician but floyd is dying of exposure down there the situation is becoming desperate burden put caution to the side the time for strategy is over now we try brute force Oonga Boonga. The squad went Oonga Boonga. Hand. That's not a rock, it's a boulder. Or wait, it was the inverse. Okay, but why was that better editing and, like, a more coherent story than movies I've seen in the past, like, five to ten years? Like, why did that actually slap? Like, that, that, as that it had a beginning, had a middle, had an end. It had, it had tension. It had build-up. It had, uh, illusion, or uh, allegory, I guess you could say. Um, it, 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 it was a complete story in a dream sequence. But why was this better than most movies I've seen in the past ten years? Yeah. We're here. We're gonna get you out of here. After 79 hours in the cold water, he is delirious, fading in and out of consciousness. Yeah, he's not doing well. I'm gonna put the special harness around you. Burden and Miller, they're here too. VTuber Twitter be like, I'm gonna put the special harness around you. <laughs> Fuck off. 
We got three more boys right up the cave, and they're all ready to pull as hard as they can to get you out of here. Floyd was frightened. I'm not going to lie. It's going to hurt. Yeah. No one knew quite how this would go. Floyd was given some food, some coffee, a large swig of whiskey. Yes. And a sedative. That yeah. sedative would keep him calm if his ankle bone is snapped or the... Oh, I just realized they drugged the fuck out of this man. Because painkillers are sedative, right? And alcohol mix in very interesting ways. Oh man, they wanted to make sure this guy couldn't feel shit. Skin on his foot is peeled off. That's old whiskey too. Floyd took the opportunity to appreciate being surrounded by friends and family. Go on, do it. All right, strap him up. Homer attached a harness. He ties on the rope. Miller gives the signal. Ready. Burden gives the final all clear. Ready. Everybody braced for the tug of war. Cave versus man. The winner gets Floyd. Three, two, do it. The issue that I foresee is this is not going to be a clean pull. So if we say that, is my, oh, never mind, I can't actually show my fucking cursor. Um, so if we have, if you look at, say, the top of your keyboard, how it's like a horizontal surface, let's say Floyd is laying on that, right? And he has a parallel surface above him, right? His chest is kind of peeking out in, you know, empty space off to the off to the left side, right? But for all intents and purposes, there is a parallel plane of stone above him. So if they attach it here, it, we're assuming it's like this is in, in, in the uh, the graphic shown here, right? Um so if they, depending on how they pull and depending on the clearance, they can either try to straight pull left, but there's only so much clearance going left because it is a vertical shaft at that point. Um, they, but if they pull up, they risk pulling him up into the uh, the parallel plane of stone above him, um, even though he's poking out at the, you know, then he you know comes up diagonally to like a 45 degree and then he starts compressing against the rock. And that's if you can even free the foot at that point. There are complications that can definitely arise from this, and at the very least, they're the only ones that have said, fuck it, we're doing something. I have to give them credit. One! Oh! The force of six men right. pulled against the clutches of the cave. Floyd began to scream. His body was being pulled up from the rubble. Yeah, like the that. The rubble was beginning to shift. Burden's calls echo through the cave. Floyd screamed harder as well. All right. So Floyd is trapped laying down like this. Yeah, this this graphic. Vertical vertical shaft. And you have a parallel plane up here uh, to him. And he's sticking out right. Exactly. Like I was, <laughs> should have just waited for this. But the pulling of the rope wrenches him up like this. Right. His torso was being compressed and bent against nope. the ceiling of the trap. Yeah. It would kill him. Floyd's screaming intensified. And through gasps was begging them to stop. But it did not stop. The agony continued. On and on. With no progress. Uh -huh. Enough! Enough! You guys are killing him! Homer quickly spun around and started pulling against the other men. He threw his legs onto the rocks and propelled himself backwards. Yep. One man versus five. I said stop! Coursing with adrenaline, he pulled the rope free from their clutch. <laughs> Legend. The tug of war was over. The cave had won. Floyd fell back down. Homer, Miller, Burden, and the other three men were flat on their backs, panting for breath. But they tried. The cave would not let this man go. The futility of the situation sank in, and all they could do was leave for now and rest. Outside, the number of spectators had increased to oh 200. They it. buzzed and asked useless questions, and Homer walked dejectedly past them. He sat by thinking what he could do. The cause seemed hopeless. Homer? Then, someone showed up who could turn things around. He looked up to see a childhood friend of both his and Floyd's, Johnny Gerald. He was just the man for the job. He was an experienced caver, and he was an experienced cave-trapped person rescuer. Neat. All right, let me go see him. Well, <laughs> look who it is. Floyd perked up. This is the kind of people that I like having with, or having around me. This is the kind of people I associate with. Because if this, in fact, happened to Kip, right? Like, if something happened, Kip is... <laughs> help step Kip, I'm stuck. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, 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 look who it is. <laughs> Fuck you too. How Good to see you. Can you get me out, please? 
up immediately. Yay. Thrilled to see Gerald. The sparkle from Floyd's gold tooth could be seen in his smile. All right, let's see what we can do. Gerald jumped down. And then, for the next three hours, Gerald went back to the original plan of digging away the rocks. His stamina was good. Yeah. And progress was surprisingly good as well. For several more hours, he continued. Just moving stone after stone. New one would fall in his place, and he'd move that one too. By midnight, he had enough room to shift position and clear some of the gravel that was at each side of Floyd's body. Hell yeah. Gerald would spend several more hours scooping. And it worked. Slowly, more and more of Floyd's body was coming free from the rubble. So here's the thing that they could have done as well. Once again, hindsight's 2020. I'm not the specialist here. What kind of perplexes me is that like you have all these fucking people that are like, oh, I can get them out right now. I'll take Swig from his trusty Vault 13 canteen. Okay, one, they don't want to go down and fucking do it. As long as someone else can go down and do this, they could, in fact, just take shifts trying to do this while a new strategy develops. At the very least, if you're doing something, it's better than doing nothing, right? If your friend is trapped under a fallen oak, right? An oak falls on them and they're, they're alive, uh, but they're caught in this precarious situation, right? I mean, what could you do? Well, you're trying to strategize how to get leverage. You're trying strategizing how to uh, get physics and mechanics to work for you, right? Um, you could... Theoretically, as long as it doesn't make the situation worse, like it doesn't, you know, cause it to fall further impact, right? You could start just shawing branches off, you know, branches that aren't caught on a, on rocks or anything that if they were gone, right, then they could fall forward. At very least, you're lightening the you're, you're doing something, right, is what I'm trying to get across. Something is still going to be better than nothing in this situation, especially when time is of the essence here. The lower shoulders. His chest, even his hips and thighs. It was incredible progress, but Gerald wasn't done yet. He kept going until practically all of the rubble, except a few harder to reach piles down Uh by his legs, remained. Uh The relief from the weight made it significantly easier for Floyd to breathe and flex his limbs. Good shit. Over the course of those few hours, Gerald managed to scoop away more than a thousand pounds of debris. The fucking legend. Bro, bro, that is a flex. Like you can go, like I like all these people out there. Oh, I could, I could do it in a day, mate. Did you just move five hundred kilos? Did you just move eleven hundred fucking pounds? I thought not. <laughs> Shut up. But there was still a lot more to go, and that rock by Floyd's foot was still holding him in place. By two a.m., Gerald was spent. Yeah, he needed I bet. rest, and he was ready to head back. Outside. I bet he's. I bet he's. He's exhausted. Floyd? Tomorrow, you're going to be a free man. Now, here you might think that things will become straightforward. They did not. You would think. Not. Now that that space had been cleared, Burden became convinced that if he could get down that passage again, he could free Floyd with another rope pull. Fate deciding, Uh-oh. with both feet or just one. So Burden marches up to the cave once again. But when he tried to enter, they shoved him in the other direction. Ah! The crowd was acting as a sort of phalanx, and anyone who tried to get in was told to get lost. Fucking why? They had been specifically instructed to not let anyone in, and they were especially opposed to Bird in making another rope pull after word spread about the disaster of the first attempt. He tried to reason with them. Less a disaster. He was one of the only people that decided, one of three people that decided he was going to do a thing. I mean, I, I'm going to cut him some credit. It depends who issued this. Uh, this defend order. I, I, it depends who issued it and why. Let me try the rope pull again. It'll work this time. But they would not hear it. Oof. Of the three other people who could reach him, Gerald and Homer are out exhausted and yeah. sick, which leaves only Miller, who is tied up with work. Uh-huh. With Bird and Bard from entering, Floyd was left on his own. Fuck. Wondering why it was that no one would visit him. Is anyone there? Help. Hey. Anyone out there? 100 hours. Now, the work Miller was doing was handing over reports to his boss about Sand Cave. Those reports would be fed through the news grapevine to the Associated Press, and the Associated Press would send that out to its very large affiliate network. The word was spreading about Floyd. Uh By afternoon, Miller was done with his work, and he hurried back to the cave. So he gets inside and, huh, his eyes didn't have to work half as hard to adjust to the dark. 
someone had installed electric lights from the entrance right all the way down to Floyd. Interesting. Miller popped down to the lower level. Ah, Floyd! Fancy seeing you here, buddy! When Miller reached Floyd, he took the final bulb and attached it to his collar to keep him warm. Then, reusing that syrup tin, he started offloading gravel into buckets. Those buckets were then passed up and down the cabin, like an assembly line. And so it went right. on for the next few hours. Right. Until he was... Honestly, like, this should have been... This could have been what you were doing in the first initial hours. Like, that when everyone, everyone starts getting together, everyone doesn't know what to fucking do. Let's just fucking do this. Clearly, what, what was it, George did? For, worked at first. Just get people to help us. Even if he has to go down there, right? At the very least, you get these people that are going to assembly line it out of there. Hindsight's 2020. I'm aware. <laughs> Too tired and needed to rest. Yeah. Miller then took some time to have a bit of a one-on-one -on -one with Floyd. He said, you know, there are a lot of people in the news that are reading about you and have you in their prayers. Is there anything you want me to relay to them? Floyd had been in that cave for over 100 hours now. Yeah. And seeing everyone working together, Floyd was overcome with a sense of hope and relief. Floyd wanted to pass on a message. Here is what he is quoted in the newspaper. I believed I would go to heaven. I can feel that I'm to be taken out alive and with both my feet. I kept thinking, what would happen if the rock above me would fall? It, it caused me to shudder. Mm-hmm. I kept thinking to drive my mind to something else, but it wasn't much use. I couldn't do much to help those who came to help me, but I knew that a lot of people were willing to do all in their power. Mm -hmm. It gave me courage. Tuesday morning, I thought to myself, four days down here and no nearer freedom than I was on the first day. How will it end? Will I get out? I couldn't think of it. I have faced death before, it doesn't frighten me, but it is so long. Tell them I am not going to give up. Mm -hmm. Tell them I am going to fight and be patient and never forget them. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, news of the incident kept growing. The entire country was captivated by Floyd's story. Crowds huddled around newspaper stands each morning and afternoon, waiting to get any new drips of information. It became a water cooler topic. Mm -hmm. Did you catch the latest episode of Game of Caves? He Game had the prayer caves. power of practically every church in the county. Even the upper echelons of government were keeping tabs on Floyd. Congress halted session to get their little updates, and even the president, Calvin Coolidge, took a glancing interest. Huh. By the end, the Floyd Collins incident would explode into the third largest non-political story between World War I and World War Two. This just boggles me as a as as a, a fact. This boggles me. That is wild, and the fact that a lot of people haven't heard of this. Holy shit! All of this excitement brought an inundation of people to Cave City. Old uh -huh. population six hundred and ninety. Yawn. New population. 10,000. Right. The bank vaults ran empty as people withdrew cash to spend around town. But they wouldn't have much to spend it on because restaurants didn't even have enough stock to feed all the new customers. Oh. Practically every hotel room in the county was taken, so residents capitalized with a 1920s version of Airbnb ah! and charged outrageous fees to offer places to sleep on their bedroom floor or in mattress-lined bathtubs. So, like, and that's the thing, is, like, this is... The, the the town just isn't prepared for this level of influx. Like, the, this is just... It's just not. It's unreasonable to expect Cave City to be in any way, shape, or form prepared for the absolute inundation of tourists. Like, yes, they're a tourist town. They use tourism as, um, you know, their... Uh, their as, as a local economic thing, right? But they're not just equipped to deal with this many people. And that's... Not unreason. That's not unreason. Because it's just prior to this, right? Just, anyways, just if for if anyone was like, you know, well, why didn't they just have? Why didn't they just order? Where it takes time to order that shit as well. It takes time to prep shit. It takes time to do things. And this is this all has happened within four days. That is wild. 
and 4,500 automobiles impatiently sat, backed up for two miles from 20 different states wow. to drive onto the Collins Farm, churning up all the pristine green fields with their tires and turning them into brown muck paddocks. Uh huh. Deep blow all those tourists. Car show. <laughs> If you've been following for a while, there's your, re there's your meme. There's Miller, trying to free Floyd. All right, a little bit of setup. Floyd, Miller, some remaining rubble, rock. Yeah. For anyone to lift the rock by hand would be impossible because Floyd's body obstructs the hole. Miller yeah. grabs a crowbar and shoves it through the gap. Uh -huh. Now he's going to lever it off Floyd's foot. Cool. The crowbar is now primed in place. Next, he takes a jack. He positions it on top of the crowbar so uh -huh. that it will be forced against the ceiling. Right. However, no, this is this is great actually. This is this is yeah, that that that's A plus solid. Problem. As theory. That jack is too big. Yeah. It doesn't fit. Miller yells up the tunnel for a smaller one, but this took some time. And when it arrived, too small. Mm. Won't reach the ceiling. But instead of sending for another one, Miller takes two blocks of wood and bolsters them underneath the crowbar. Right. right. So the crowbar now sits higher, it fulcrums against the blocks, and the jack is sitting on top. Uh -huh. All Miller has to do is expand the jack, which he will do using this spanner, holding it at the very tips of his fingers. Oh. Sounds easy. It's not. No. But that's the plan. Let's get him out of there. He turned the wrench. The jack expanded and the crowbar took strain. I mean, so it's at least tension is now being applied. Like this is closer than they, than he, the fact that this is working is awesome. And he's, he's applying physics to this beautifully. The whole thing slid apart with a pang. Yeah. Floyd wasn't hurt, but Miller was contorting and exerting his whole body from back to fingertip. Yeah. They tried again, same result. Undeterred, Miller caught his breath and gave it another shot. He slowly turned the jack. Pressure building. Mm -hmm. And this time, Miller could feel the rock move. It bloody moved. He kept turning the wrench and the rock moved a little more. Uh -huh. His hands were shaking, knees weak, his arms are heavy. Mm -hmm. Pang. One of the wood blocks flew out. It all scattered apart. Yeah. The rock painfully slammed back down Ow. on Colin's foot. Ah. You'll get it next time, Miller. Try again. Miller kept on trying, countless attempts. He kept pushing himself deeper into the trap, finding new approaches. Damn the blocks. No, try the blocks again. Clear some more rubble. Floyd, unable to help physically, is supporting him in spirit at least, cheering him on. Yay. And Miller kept going and going and going until he had nothing left. For the next... It might be prudent at that point to have... At the very least, while you're attempting this, right, right, you're having multi, having like multiple things going on at that point, like you're working in the kitchen, right, you're working fryer, you're working grill, you're working salad, all, all at once, right, like you have the well done burger going as you're prepping fry, as you're doing stuff in a uh, salad, right, call up for, hey, this is a little too small, I need a meat, more medium sized one, right, or I need list slightly bigger than this, while you still do this, that way you have more than one iron in the fire, so to speak. Four hours he tried, no progress. Miller was exhausted. He couldn't do this on his own, but he was the only one slim enough to get in through the gap. Right. The group decided to concede for now and return to the surface. They would take just a small break, but it looked to everyone like there was a clear way to get this man out. So Miller and Burden crawl back through the mud and the winds of the cave. As they made their way through, the cave was visibly sagging. Yep. The ceiling seemed lower. Parts were harder to navigate than before, doubly so with their bruised and rock-shredded hands. They stepped outside and took in the fresh country air. Yep. But as their eyes adjusted to the light, they saw something new. A man named Henry Carmichael was standing in front of a sizable crowd of engineers uh. and hard hats and soldiers in military uniform. Now, Henry is the superintendent of the Kentucky Rock Asphalt Company. The engineers are his employees, and the men in military garb are the National Guard. Oh man, they got the National Guard in. Oh, ho, 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 ho. here they come! Now, Carmichael has been quietly looking at the situation from afar, and he is thoroughly unimpressed. This is no rescue operation. Once Miller and co call it quits, Carmichael had two of his employees do a proper 
survey of the cave uh -huh. and see if it was suitable to bring in his whole team of men. The two surveyors go in. As the passage led down to Floyd, it was showing alarming signs of deterioration. Right. You could see the splitting of the rock above. Damn. Boards were slipping out of place or splintering. Small rocks tumbled down the walls. They soon came back with a report. It was not good. Uh-uh. All right, so the following is a recounting of events from one of Carmichael's men, Casey Jones. <clears throat> Casey and another worker spent about an hour in the cave surveying its condition, looking at the boards, the ceiling, the stability of the walls. Casey continued deeper towards Floyd. He was fighting against his nerves. The shifting of the rock pinged his every instinct to flee. But he could hear Floyd calling out for help in the distance. Summoning all of his courage, he pushed himself on, through the final squeeze and over the ledge that looked down on Floyd. Rubble continued to drop from the ceiling, bouncing all around him. Mm -hmm. The ceiling felt closer to him than it was before, mm. but maybe that was just the dark playing tricks? Please, come down. Uh, I can't right now, Floyd, but I will when I get back. Now, Casey is being pulled in two directions. No, come back, come on. Let's get out of here already. Please, I'm so thirsty. Okay. Casey climbed down next to Floyd. Quick, drink, said Casey as he tried to pour some coffee into Floyd's mouth. But f coffee would actually serve to dehydrate him. Floyd turned his head and kept his lips pursed. The rocks were falling at a faster rate now. The loud cracking out above, sounding like thunder. In that moment, Casey realized what was happening. Floyd was not really asking for a drink. Floyd knew that a cave-in was inevitable. Scared and approaching his fifth day trapped, he was completely at his wit's end. Yep. He knew he was about to be trapped in that cave, and he didn't want to be trapped alone. Yeah. For God's sake, Casey, come on. You're going to get us killed. And, like... You can't really blame the man. He's not a, he's not a soldier. Floyd's not a soldier. He's not, you know, someone that could reasonably be expected to do that. And humans are interesting creatures psychologically. Like, he just doesn't want to be alone. I mean, that's, you know, anyone has an expectation of not wanting to be alone. You know, it's sad and depressing. Don't get me wrong. And I think the call here is for that worker to unfortunately leave. Uh, I, I can't blame Floyd, though. I really can't. Stay with me, please. Don't leave. Casey quickly turned away and scrambled back up the ledge. He made his way back through the final squeeze, his limbs scrambling against the cave walls. It seemed as if everything around him was shrinking. He made it out, and he joined his co-worker. They both turned around and watched on in horror as the yellow of the bowl was being swallowed by the dark. Yep. Rubble fell fast and heavy until no light could be seen at all. Rocks blocked out Floyd's panicked cries. The one route to Floyd was now sealed shut, a tomb of rock and dust. It's morning. Burden and Miller jump out of their tents, ready for the day. They're feeling optimistic. Today will be the day that they get Floyd out of there. And they're packing some new tools to help them with the job. Mm -hmm. Wire to wrap around the wooden blocks, that'll stop them from slipping. And a blowtorch to carve away some of the rock, you know, make the hole a bit bigger. Yeah. But when Miller got to the turnaround room, all of that optimism left him. The entrance to the squeeze was now just a pile of debris. Miller froze, staring at it for a long while. Then he sighed and did the only thing he could think. Make an opening through that rubble. But the more he raked away, the more fell in its place. It was never ending. He persisted, ignoring the danger around him. Thud. A large piece of debris landed on him. Luckily, it was only dried clay. He is uninjured. But recognizing the danger the fact that that's clay though clay is not clay, clay is also malleable clay is not like granite right it's it's not a hard or dense stone 
This very malleable cave. Miller returned to the surface. Fifteen minutes later, he emerged from the cave with a bloodied up nose and bruises down his back and shoulders. Burden caught sight and races over to him. Miller just says, for God's sake, don't let anyone go back in there. Yeah. Miller leaves the site. Burden doesn't know what to do. Over at the house, Homer is terribly ill and out of action. Yeah. And that just leaves Gerald. Now, he comes marching up when he hears the news, and he is livid. Yeah. He told the crowds to keep away or the whole thing would cave in, and they didn't listen. Then exactly that thing happened. And what were they supposed to do now? Look, don't touch the hot pot on the stove. You're going to get hurt. Literally, like, ten people touch the hot pot on the stove. Look, all I'm gonna say is I told you, motherfuckers. Like, you touched it. I told you not to. I told you it was gonna happen. But you touched it anyways. You can really, you get to reap the, reap the rewards and the consequences of that action. The rest of the day was spent squabbling and bickering over who was to blame. You caused the cave-in. No, you caused the cave-in. Oh, cave your bloody head in, mate. Got him. And Floyd spent the rest of that day alone. The surveyors continued checking the cave throughout the day. At 6pm, Carmichael had ordered everyone to an assembly. Gerald took the floor. He was going to give this one last shot. Gerald addressed the crowd. Listen up. There's death down there. The walls and ceilings are crumbling. Unless you're determined to take the biggest chance you ever took in your life, tell me now and stay outside. Next, they told all the Gawkers to get the hell out of the cave. Clear off. Thanks, and so, fuck. Gerald went in and out of that cave half a dozen times, working away at the rubble, blocking access to floor, leaving only when he suspected another cave-in or to get food and water. Men on the sidelines were supplying new timber. Yeah. A group of men helped Gerald to prop up the ceiling and guard against further collapse. Right, at that point they are having to in real time prevent a collapse they are having to reinforce the structural integrity of the cave in real time this, this is reactive this is not proactive like <laughs> it's already going to happen around them they are they're they're effectively extending that timer gerald toiled away at the pile eager to reach his friend he worked steadily mindful of the danger poised right above him bit by bit he reduced that pile until a light. He called out, yelling updates through the hole. Bad news! We can't reach you, but hold on! We're coming! Gerald continued. The pile got smaller still. The gap was large enough now that Gerald thought he might be able to fit. Uh huh. Okay, that's enough. Floyd, I'm going for now, but when I get back, I'm gonna get you out of there. Gerald scrambled back out the cave, over to the men, and through panted breaths, he said, Gather the equipment, and in an hour's time, it's gonna be me and Floyd coming out of that cave. I mean, yeah, that's how you, that's how you inspire somebody. Gerald entered Sand Cave for his final time. The walls had been reinforced, but mud and water was accumulating everywhere. Yeah. He waded through it and pressed on past the danger of the sagging ceiling. With determination on his face and a grease gun clutched in his right hand, he scrambled towards Floyd. But before the final squeeze, he stopped. Fuck. It was all gone. Another cave-in, even worse than the first. He thought about how he could have been on the other side of that rubble. His mind raced, weighing out what to do. He shouted, Floyd! As a not-so-subtle reminder of the danger he was in, a rock fell from the ceiling and cracked Gerald Ugh. across the head. Luckily, just a small one. He felt around for blood and kept shouting. So, if anything, I feel that might be at this point with the sheer instability of the cave at this point. I feel that him shouting out might have been enough to dislodge that. It wasn't a large stone. It was a piece of clay, right? It is just that unstable right now. Floyd! He could definitely hear a voice. But it was faint. Yeah. Gerald was scared that this was Floyd's last shot at rescue, and he threw himself against the pile and pulled it away with finger and nail. Yeah. Launching the debris behind him with force, tearing at the pile like a man on fire. Dust bellowed, 
Rocks flew and he kept shouting out for Floyd as he went. Floyd! Until finally, the cave had had enough. It let loose a large, jagged rock aimed straight at Gerald, Ooh. striking him on his back. Ooh. Gerald stumbled out of that cave, injured and defeated. The cave just doesn't want to let go. Only after the cave did they start to think about all of the things that they could have done. Wait, why didn't we rig a portable telephone line? That would have been incredibly simple here in 1925. Fucking, like, hindsight, like, especially here in 2023, hindsight is 2020. Like, at the... You're, you're, seeing, you're seeing it in real time. Yeah, why have we been running in and out to deliver updates? Why didn't we give him an AM radio? He could have had something to listen to and receive messages of support from the public. Wait, why don't we rig up a tarpaulin so we could lift his torso up so he wouldn't be slowly dying of exposure? I mean, that one kind of makes sense a little bit, but like the, the radio and stuff like that, that's just a waste of time. It's a waste of resources. It's unnecessary stuff down there when realistically, you know, they're thinking he's going to be out in the next couple hours for the past few days. Like, it's just a waste of resources. Oh, God, why didn't we run a feeding tube? That's also a technology we have in 1925. Hmm, or can get the feeding late. tube, Patrick. Now what? The one route to get to Floyd is closed forever. That meant two options. Number one, capitulation. Surrender him to the cave. Or number two, dig down from directly above Floyd. Now, the prospect of digging from above seemed almost fanciful. At least, it did in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But luckily, they had some help. Owing to Miller's reporting, Floyd had become practically the most famous person in the country. The rescue had become a high priority for the governor of Kentucky. Lieutenant General Denhart enters the scene. Whoa. He's been updated on the situation, and following shortly behind him is a small army of miners and engineers. So, like, as somebody that's known, like, why? what is the National Guard doing at this point? I'm curious. Like, what is their assigned task? Because they weren't keeping people away from the cave. Like, what are they doing? Not, and I'm not shitting on them. I'm just like, what were the orders here? Because we're missing that piece of it. What were their orders here? Because they could have pitched in for something like this. They, they could have done this fairly easily, and they do have military training, from my understanding, right? Like, I, I, I don't know. Once again, hindsight's 2020, but it's just like, the piece feels like that was left unused. He declared to the despondent crowd, Gentlemen, I am here on behalf of the governor. The purse strings of Kentucky are open. Take this blank check and bring that man out alive. Mm -hmm. Floyd in that cold, wet confine could not have imagined the scale of the operation that was going on 55 feet above him. Authorities assumed control of Colin's rescue. The important thing to note, I'm, I'm just going through the wording of that, bring that man out alive, that is the wording there. So if this fails, theoretically things could fall through, right? They go, oh, well, you can all... The blank check was only meant if he was brought out alive. We're not going to honor that. You, you see where I'm going with that, right? It depends on the terms and conditions of when that, how that was issued. Dinhart gave Carmichael control over the site. And Carmichael raced to get to work. Carmichael rallied up his men. His fleet of expensive high-tech machinery. Professional groups were brought yeah. in from all across the state. No longer was this the ad hoc effort of a few individuals. It was a professional and organized yeah. rescue. No more squabbling and standing around. Everyone knew what they had to do, and they were working as fast as they could. Yeah. But just as hopes were rising, they were once again dashed against the rocks. They had all of this state-of-the-art machinery shipped heavy. in and assembled by the engineers and rearing to go. And it was all worthless. Uh -huh. See, the problem is... The cave drew air into it. Oh. These diesel-powered engines pumped out enormous volumes of choking exhaust. It effectively would just gas him out. Like, I don't it's not negative pressure. I don't think that's what, what that's at play here. But if the cave is intaking it's intaking air, right? 
they're you're effectively just going to gas gas Floyd. Like it's going to be worthless, which is really awful to consider for the time. Like like the, the time they need these machines, and now they can't use them because oh man, within a day's operation. The cave would be filled with carbon monoxide, and Floyd would be dead from asphyxiation. Just as quickly as solutions would arise, the cave would parry them away. It refused to let this man go. This useless machinery was now blocking the path to Floyd, which means they would have to spend the next couple of hours disassembling all of it and moving it away. Because. They're about to dig a 55-foot pit the old-fashioned way. Yeah. By hand. It's going to take a while. Carmichael's expertise was in quarries, but the principles transferred over to caving and digging holes. Uh-huh. He did some quick back-of-the-envelope math. I've got 75 men. They can dig at two feet per hour, and we have to go 55 feet deep. That means we can get to those men in roughly 30 hours, give or take. Now, was it possible that Floyd could survive for another 30 hours? Absolutely. Theoretically. Four men started at great pace. The soil was soft and easy to dig. Right. But as they got deeper, it became more difficult. Uh huh. The deeper the shaft, the narrower it became. Right. Soon, instead of four men, they could only fit two. Carmichael understood well that this was a race against time, so it was important that these two men were working at full capacity. Uh Carmichael had a queue of men on the sidelines, poised to dig. And the moment that either of the two men in the hole slowed down, they pulled them out and threw in a new one. Right. Nonetheless, progress slowed the deeper they went. About a quarter of the way down, they reached rock, and one of the men would have to work a pickaxe, leaving only one to shovel. At this depth, rubble couldn't just be flung into a pile. They had to start loading it into buckets, which would have to be pulled to the surface on ropes. Like, and that's the thing, is like, you know, going from two men to, for four men to two men, that is a, you are halving your productivity. And now, furthermore, you're having your productivity again. And that's just doing basic, that's just doing basic math. I'm sure there's other factors that it could be a, specific fraction of you know fraction of that but at the very least you have uh, at face value quartered your productivity then men outside were ready with wheelbarrows to cart that downfield time passed hours passed night went to day cat white. the day was hot this was yet another problem because it's early february There's tons of ice still in the ground, and its exposure to the midday sun was causing it to become unstable. And the ground was becoming sodden as a result. Progress Mm -hmm. slowed once again. Just half a foot per hour. There was little for Colin's friends and family to do, but watch the clock and pray. Yeah. Interestingly, though, there were a lot of people on the sidelines. Floyd wouldn't have believed the scene above him. Practically everything but a Ferris wheel. Food stalls were set. Didn't they say to like get everyone out of here though? Why are still? Why are they still? Where is where is the National Guard here? And one, not blaming them. Like what was their what were their orders coming here? I'm very I'm very confused. Like why are these? Why are they just lollygagging? Get up to cash in not on the crowd. These people. Families and church groups picnicked in the fields. Despite prohibition, moonshiners showed up <laughs> to sell drugs with all of those X's written on. There was even a bloody juggler. I won't stop juggling till he's free. And old man Lee was there, walking around, shaking his jar, and soliciting donations. Huh. But where were Homer and Burden and Miller during all of this? Okay, let's back up a bit. Miller's probably at this point back at his paper job right at that point i think he's back there people did not properly understand exactly how floyd was trapped and the news didn't help much either right. so the obvious question started to arise why hasn't he been rescued yet just clear some gravel or pull a rope how is this so hard motive was attributed i heard they didn't even want to have him rescued at all and this is this is where people turn it, this is actually why if you see certain things like on on Twitter and stuff right where the internet'll get mad for 2 weeks 
and then the internet forgets it even happened in the first place. It, it's the very it's the same concept. People are very here. They want instant gratification. They want it now. And if it isn't resolved within the man time frame that they want, regardless of you know the complexities of it, they just don't care, and will start connecting dots into lines that aren't actually there. Uh, you know, it's like. This man, oh, I hear they didn't want to even release him in the first place. Okay, one, do you even know the situation? Because arguably you're just a dingus trying to follow the paper, right? Like, you're just trying to follow the story, and now you're annoyed at the story because, oh, why can't I hear something new? What's the next thing? I didn't get my gratification for the story ending when situations are not this cut and dry. So, just, uh, humans. I heard that they're doing all of this for publicity. And Lee's activity of soliciting donations, remember from before, further inflamed rumors. Yeah. I bet Floyd isn't even trapped in there. These were all real rumors, and yep. they got worse. You know what? I've heard he comes out at night, and then he just goes back in in the morning. Uh-huh. Other rumors included... I heard that after Floyd went into the cave, someone murdered him. Others said... I think they're withholding food and water from him, so he dies. This whole thing is a fraud. Uh-huh. As time went on, it was harder and harder to ignore the hoax claims. Then, people started to form righteous mobs, claiming the whole thing was a fraud, and they started to get nasty. Then fucking leave. Holy shit. <laughs> like, how many times have we asked you to leave? Jeez. In fact, two people even went to the telegraph office and pretended to be Floyd sending telegrams to his mother. Who, by the way, died several years ago. Here's Rough. what it said. Quote, Please contradict statements that I am buried alive in Sand Cave. Stop. Tell mother I am all right. Stop. Am coming home. Stop. Floyd Collins. Naturally, the AP published these telegrams unquestioningly. Look, if you're going to try to, like, be fraudulent like that, as someone with banking experience, right, at least do it fucking well. That's just stupid. Like, not that I'm condoning anybody committing fraud. That, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying at the very least, I have standards. If you're going to commit it, you know, if you're going to do something like that, don't be a fucking idiot. <laughs> it's just stupid. And now word is out to the press that he isn't actually in the cave after all. That made the authorities look foolish, and it could not go on. So, a hasty court-martial was arranged, and Homer, Miller, and Gerald were summoned. Uh-huh. They hold one session on Monday and another on Tuesday. Lee and everyone else is cleared of charges. A retraction is written and things carry on. The men of the dig were busy as ever. They set up pumps to mitigate the water in the shaft. Right. Men continued working in shifts and carrying away the earth. Here they are with strips of lumber to shore up the walls. Mm -hmm. They were just short of halfway and their rate of clearing material had slowed to a mere four inches per hour. Wow. It was at that point Carmichael went, yeah, okay, sod the cavers, try the dynamite. <laughs> but it hardly made a dent. Wow. And it risked causing the shaft to collapse. But despite all of these challenges, there was an optimism in the air because everyone was keen for their turn to dig. And... Because they had one more thing to latch onto. He is probably still alive. Mm -hmm. Now, how do they know that? Okay, so remember that light bulb around Floyd's neck? Mm -hmm. Well, it's powered by a simple copper wire. Mm -hmm. Bare copper wire is subject to very minute fluctuations in resistance. Mm -hmm. So, an engineer rigs up a radio amplifier... Once again, this just solidifies my stance on the most genius people. If I needed something constructed, I could consult our rednecks, engineers, and probably the Marines. Like, if I needed anything, I could just... It, and I don't mean redneck in a derogatory context. I never mean it in a derogatory context. Fucking love them. Like, any... Rednecks, engineers, Marines. It, they will find a way to get the cave on the moon. That, that there is no question there. Just no matter how much alcohol, um, <laughs> how much alcohol it takes to get there. <laughs> uh, to this wire, to read the current and see those small fluctuations. Yeah. Yeah. There they were. About twenty per minute. Breathing. The rate of steady breathing. Got him. 
As his chest expands and contracts, they can read it from this device. And so they kept going. Wow. And going. And going. 30 hours was the original estimate. Now 144 hours had come and gone and they were only at 44 feet. They're getting there though. Then rain fell. Oh! Rain that mixed with dirt to make mud. Much of which then froze to make ice. Fuck. Ice which expanded and damaged the integrity of the shaft walls. Yeah. Slowing down with every hour, they continued. Because water expands when it's frozen. So think about the water getting into minute cracks and crevices and little nooks and crannies of the shaft, right? And then it freezes and it expands. And you know what happens when things expand? Things get misplaced. Things get dislodged. Also, when the ice does melt, there's nothing holding that anymore. So now you've displaced all of this, caused structural integrity damage, and now it has to try to reset to its original position, but you just get stuff that just cracks, falls out. It's a, it, 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 it very... Very damaging. <laughs> People think that water, is, at a base level, think that water is a, uh, a, a, a nourishing force, right? It's a creative force. Water's a destructive force. Magma, Earth, that's the creative force. Fun fact. Many more hours passed, and they were getting close. But it was now 15 days since Floyd was first stuck in that cave, yeah, that and people alive. had mostly lost hope. Yeah. That excitement in the newspapers was tempering down. Visitors began clearing out from Cave City. Good! Many still held on to hope, but their final lifeline, that light bulb, had burnt out. Yep. And it wasn't possible to do any more readings on the radio amplifier without it. It's entire Well, so, if it, if, if it... I'd have to figure out, and the engineer would probably know, if it actually truly burnt out from use, or if it was because he wasn't breathing anymore. Because I know... God, because I, I did this in the past. I don't know too much about it, right? I, I hardly remember this, so I'm re re reacting to it. Like, oh, man, like, that could have that could have been his... I don't know, it, it depends how it was hooked up. I'd have, to, I'd have to consult the engineer's notes. No one knew if Floyd was still alive. Another 51 hours would pass before, finally... They reached the 60-foot depth. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Chisel. A chisel is handed down. At 1.30 p.m. on Monday, February 16th, Sand Cave would open once again. Floyd had been pinned in that cave for 17 days. Yeah. 12 spent without food. Yeah. Survivable. Nope. Yeah. 12 without water. No. Likely not survivable. No. The light bulb, a vital source of warmth, burned out four days ago. Yep. But maybe the moisture from the dripping of the cave walls provided him with some sustenance? Depends. There are stories of people surviving harsher extremes. A few final rocks were moved to allow Ed Brenner to squeeze in. Everybody stood by, absolutely silent, peering into that hole. Ed scanned the opening with his flashlight, listening carefully for movement. Then, head first, he worked his way in. Right. The flashlight reflected dimly off the rock walls, but then caught the reflection of something gold. That golden flicker was not the light bulb. It was the glistening of light reflecting off a gold tooth. Mm -hmm. His mouth hung open. Floyd was dead. Yeah. Brenner was helped out of the cave and he delivered the news. Dead. Yeah, they're feeling that. A coroner would later state that Floyd succumbed to exposure. Yep. And that they had missed him by just three days. Wow. About the same time that the light bulb had gone out. Yep. When the light bulb went out, so too did his one source of warmth. Yep. If it had held out, Collins might have as well. But what would they do now with the body? The shaft walls were ready to fall inwards, and risking lives to remove a corpse was seen as just irresponsible. Right. So it was decided by the authorities. Floyd will stay in that cave. Now this did not sit well with the family, but nope. what could they do? 
The next day, they planned the funeral. The town emptied of people, and the shaft, with Floyd at the bottom, was filled back in. Yeah. But that's not quite the end of the story. But if you hung on for this long, keep holding on, because things are going to continue to get interesting. <laughs> but first, let me do a wrap-up of where everyone is and all that stuff. Context, context. The Collins family already had financial hardship. Lee Collins wasn't able to raise much money from the donations. After the crowds cleared, he was seen searching the site, scanning for empty bottles that he could resell. Right. But the owner of the land, B. Doyle, and supposed friend of Floyd, was wholly unsympathetic. He put up a sign that said, Floyd's dead body, right this way. <laughs> oh, 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 Come on now. Fucked up. Take a look. Only 50 cents a gander. It's 100 years later, B's dead. Let's call it even. Yeah. Also, remember those claims of Kentucky being an open purse? Well, the state reneged on the deal. Once again, depends on the terms of the deal. The, 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 the strings of the coin purse from Kentucky are open. Bring that man back alive. He's not alive. Contracts. They refused to pay many of the rescuers, and most of them went home without the promised pay. Many yeah. having sacrificed a week's worth of wages from missing their regular work. Some of them did make some money out of the situation, yeah. though. They signed on to a type of touring theatre called Vaudeville. Yeah. They roamed the country, telling their personal stories of their attempted rescue. Miller received the best offer out of anyone, however. How about 50 grand to do the Chautauqua lecture circuit? It'll be worth nearly a million dollars in 20 oh, 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 oh. He declined. He stayed loyal to the Louisville Courier, continuing his work there for several more years. Although, a bit of a perk, he won the 1926 Pulitzer Prize Hell for yeah. his reporting on Floyd Collins. Hell yeah! Okay, so back to the brother, Homer. He needed money and he agreed to do that vaudeville circuit. He stood on stage and shared with the crowd stories about growing up with his brother Floyd and detailing out the tragedy. But Homer made it known why he was up here on stage trying to get money. He had a mission. Yeah. I kept thinking of Floyd lying in the muck where he had suffered beyond our power to imagine. I would never have peace of mind if he remained there. Mm -hmm. He wanted the money to dig Floyd up and get him out of that cave. Right. A couple Me. of months later, he had it. That's awesome. Yeah, all right, so back to Floyd. April 17th, 1925. Homer and a team of excavators. They began to dig. Within a week, they had arrived at Floyd. But instead of coming down the same passage near Floyd's head, they approached from the other side where his foot was. It allowed them to remove the rock that trapped him in place. Mm -hmm. They lifted him up from his tomb and laid him down on the fresh air above. A couple of mm -hmm. days later, Floyd was given an honoured place at the family cemetery next to his mother. A stalagmite was taken from Sand Cave, carved with his name and used as a headstone. And there he lay. For no, that's not actually where it ends. Wow. Okay, this is where it gets weird. Two years later, 1927, the Collins family's finances hadn't much improved. A dentist, Harry B. Thomas, walked up to the property and made Lee an offer. Uh -huh. Sell this property to me and I will give you $10,000. Now, Homer begged him not to, because at the time, the government was starting to buy up tons of land in the area and turn it into national parks. Mm -hmm. They had to pay at a very competitive rate. But Lee was becoming a bit old and senile by this point. And frankly, it's doubtful that he cared about Homer or Floyd or anyone else for that matter. It's 100 years later, he's dead now, let's call it even. Yeah. So, the point is, in this land sale with Thomas, Lee agreed to a very odd clause. And that clause said, everything on that property belongs to Thomas. And should he wish, for example, to exhume a dead body and re-embalm it Come on. and put it on display in something really tacky like a, I don't know, a glass coffin inside a cave, maybe, then that would be his prerogative. Lee signed yes. It's so weird... Because, I mean, that's clearly the intent from the outset. It's just, it's... there. There's, there's monetary incentive. And Thomas did exactly that. Doyle made Floyd's corpse a tourist attraction. Let him rest that's in right. peace. Two bits of gander. Come and wonder at the incredible dead man who died in a cave. 
But to add insult to injury... It's it's dark tourism is, is all it is. You know, like, like oh, abandoned cities, abandoned hospitals, urban exploring, stuff like that. It's just dark tourism is, is all I would assume it would be. It worked. Visitors returned to Sand Cave to gawk morbidly at Floyd. Within a few months, Thomas had turned Lee's failing farm into a successful business. Let him rest in peace, man. The Collins family, naturally, is appalled by the situation, and they immediately object. They try a number of times to get Floyd returned to them, including through the legal system. But somehow, incredibly, the judge ruled in Thomas's favour. And so, there he lay, for the next two years. Let him rest in peace, man. Come on. <laughs> Fuck your the cave financial incentive. Was not done with Floyd. Until someone hatched a plan. Uh-huh. Two years later, it's midnight outside Sand Cave. Footsteps can be heard rustling through the brush. Now, we don't know who these two men are, but we know why they are here. Uh-huh. To rob a grave. They sneak inside and clamber over the rocks in the darkness. Reaching Floyd's casket, they undo the latch and throw open the lid. There is his shriveled body. They throw him in a gunny sack and they race off into the night. For 800 yards, they carry dear Floyd like a couple of sweaty Santas about to deliver a really terrible Christmas present. Panting, out of breath, Knowing that they're going to get caught any minute, they reach the Kentucky Green River hillside. There's no time. With a one, two, three, they launch his body towards the river, and Floyd goes sailing into the air, up, up, into the starlit beyond. If only. And landing in a bush. Oh, God. (laughs) The two men flee from the scene. Why? Now, the next morning, Thomas notices that the body of Floyd is somewhat missing, and he contacts the authorities. Uh Uh-huh. The police come, they dust the casket for fingerprints, and bloodhounds are given Floyd's scent, and... It's almost like, oh, my asset is missing. Police, please help me find my asset. You know, not not somebody's body. (laughs) This dentist viewing it as an asset. Let loose into the hillside. A few hours later, they manage to find him splayed out on a big shrub down by the river. But this time, with a leg missing. That same one that was trapped under the rock. Weird. So, despite his protests, it had been amputated. Neither the leg nor the culprits were ever found. Huh. And while it would be nice to think that this was some well-intentioned duo that did this out of the kindness of their hearts to free Floyd, it's much more likely that it was an act of vandalism because Floyd was simply too much of a hot tourist attraction. Yeah. The following day, Floyd was cast back into the cave, back into his box, and it was covered by a metal lid, surrounded by a metal chain, and locked with a padlock. He was now more trapped than he had ever been. The irony. This cave had spun fate once again to make sure that its victim would never leave. And so, time passed. Floyd's body would continue to decay. Yep. The rot from his body would eventually rot the casket too. And every decade or so, it would need to be replaced. A few years later, he was no longer on display. But even then, he remained in that box for many more years. Wow. This wasn't until 89? 1989, Floyd's Cave was purchased by Mammoth Cave National Park, and it was closed to the public. Good. There would be no more visitors. The entrance itself to Floyd's Cave was closed with a steel gate and bolted, then welded shut. Good. But the Collins family never gave up objecting to Collins' body being left in the cave. And here is where the story ends. In 1989, at the Collins' request, the National Park Service ventured into Floyd's cave. Continuing on a more than 60-year tradition, a team of people worked over the course of several days to remove him from the cave. Hmm. They took him out, left the cave, locked it behind them, and laid Floyd to rest at the Mammoth Cave Baptist Church. Good guys, National Park Service, hell yeah. Cemetery. 
after 64 years in Sand Cave, he is now finally at peace. The end. Thank you to Wendagoon as Floyd. Legit. If you don't let me out, I'm going to hire a gang of hitmen to come to your house and kill your family. <laughs> Sonito as Homer. The BTS meal McDonald's bag that has I'm McDonald's hungry. BTS. Shut the fuck up and eat some BTS, bro. Ordinary BTS. things as Miller. I'm enthusiastic, but would ultimately dock out the back exit. Rusty Cage <laughs> as Gerald. Oh, well, hello there. Haven't seen y'all in a while. Welcome to my new home. And many kudos as Burden. Hey. Hey, buddy. You right down there? I can. You're sleepy? I can. Oh. I can. Yeah. Can we get your coffee? A <laughs> little cup, little cup of Joe? <laughs> a little cup of Joseph? A little cup of Joseph from a little sleepy guy? And do not forget, World of Tanks, World Talk. of Tanks. None of this would have happened if Floyd had got World of Tanks. Wow. Ho, 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 ho. That was Sponsored. it. That was an outro. Holy fuck. But that was Man in Cave. That was an experience of all time. And I hope you enjoy this, especially for sticking out this long. And I do absolutely recommend, because this had to be a re-upload for Internet Historian, I would definitely recommend going on over and watching the original video, getting it some more algorithm love. Um, absolutely awesome content as always by them wishing them the best hoping this new upload soars beyond what the original did um and i hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your year and historian keep up the good work keep it up